JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to JV Traders Espresso with me, Dato Zone Charles, because today's the 8th of April 2022. So, yeah, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this Friday's recorded session, guys. So, yeah, uh, on Wednesday and Thursday we had the live stream, but unfortunately now we have to jump into um, recorded sessions. So, yep. Yeah, uh, I will update you on further um, kind of and further moves and how uh, this will go on. But um, for now, guys, yep. Um, apologies for that little inconvenience. However, I hope you'll you know you'll still find this video useful, and I'll hope you will <laughs> stick around basically. So yeah, um, guys, thank you very much for joining in. If you're watching this recorded video, um, before we go further, uh, let me quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So yep, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Um, okay, so um, I just jumped off from the <laughs> risk disclaimer. Okay, sorry guys about that, but um, yeah, it'll, um, I hope you had a good read through it. So uh, going further, uh, before we yeah, uh, before we jump into the charts, quick um, quick update, um, or actually quick mentioning of our JFD uh, YouTube channel, as always, uh, which, which you can subscribe to in order not to miss uh, any of our upcoming videos, of course, and our, uh, the website, the website which we have here, and especially the research page, which is also updated on a daily basis, so I believe you can find something useful around here, guys. So. Now then, uh, jumping into the charts, the first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei 225. Um, the um, the index cl uh, st is still running. I mean, the one the time at the time I'm recording this session is still it still is running, but it's going to be quite interesting to see where we're going to close. I mean, first of all, we can see that we did push a little bit higher here, and this is what I talked about yesterday. I said that we might see maybe a bit of a retracement here we, uh, towards that 21 day EMA, but if that if this area near that 21 day EMA continues to provide resistance, another slide could be possible. Well, we got that in one move uh, today, excuse me. Um, and we drifted back down, but as we can see now, we are kind of balancing uh, near the 38.2% uh, retracement on the Fibonacci. Now that's quite interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, this is, I'm, I wanna see where it's gonna end because if it's gonna end just bang on in that line, uh, maybe a bit of a retracement here could be possible going into next week. However, um, still the down uh, the downside pressure kind of remains here. And uh, to be honest, um, what I can do here right now is uh, to keep an eye on the low, the low, the current lowest point of the uh, of this week. Um, I doubt that might uh, overcome this uh, in the next kind of 20 minutes or something. But um, yeah, that's going to be probably the lowest point of this week near the 26,764 level. Now, if we break below this, this will confirm a forthcoming lower low and potentially more uh, sellers could join in. So um, at the moment, like I said, if you're looking for some upside, then uh, yes, um, a push above the 27,214 zone here to 15 level would be needed. At the same time, the index uh, would, would climb above the 21 day EMA and more buyers could join. In uh, Hong Kong's Hang Seng index, and uh, yeah, so looking at this one, it, it is still balancing. It did try to drop below this upside line. I talked about this uh, yesterday, and uh, it um, failed to do so. And, and and you can see that it's kind of still kind of trading uh, slightly above this upside line. The only worry moment here is the the fact that we are below the 21 day EMA, and in general, we're below all of the EMAs. So this kind of creates this uh, a bit of a more of a, a bearish indication. So 
if we are looking for some lower levels, guys, I'd still prefer to wait for a drop below the 21,558 level right here, marked by the low, the current lowest point of April. And then, yeah, we could go lower from there. Uh, for the upside now, I would prefer to push above the to wait for a push above the uh, current kind of highest point of April near the 22,523 zone. Uh, the German index, DAX, um, so yesterday it uh, drifted lower a little bit, but didn't really, um, you know, move uh, below the um, below previous day low. Um, you can see here we kind of remained, um, we kind of remained uh, near that uh, 14,100 zone. I mean, slightly below it, of course, but yeah, somewhere we kind of remained somewhere around there. If we take a look at the cash index right now, we'll see that uh, we are actually back above this area. So uh, we didn't really, you know, accept this as a good, strong uh, drop here. And uh, we're now seeing a bit of a, you know, a bit of a retracement here. So in other words, this area is still something to be watched at and uh, to be looked at. Um, if we get another strong move below this, then yes, I will go uh, for lower levels where my next target will be this 13,578 zone right here, marked by the low of the 15th of March. Uh, for the upside, I pre it's pretty straightforward. I need to see a break of this downside line taken from the high of the uh, 5th of January. Now, the S&P 500, and uh, yeah, uh, this one had a good reversal. Uh, the S&P was the biggest uh, gainer um, yesterday. Um, let me just quickly have a look at the sectors. Um, so yeah, the S&P was the per best performing. Healthcare was the best performing sector, followed by energy and then consumer defenses. Um, the worst performing sectors were real estate, consumer co communication services, and financials. Um, okay, so um, basically, yeah, uh, the, uh, the Dow and the NASDAQ did a little bit worse than uh, than the S&P. Um, nevertheless, uh, when I talked about this one previously, when I, if you remember, I talked about this 4,525 zone. I said that if we drop below it, then yeah, I'll go for lower levels where my next target will be at 38.2% retracement on the Fibonacci, which is near that 4,455 4, level. And as you can see here, we have managed to reach that level perfectly. So mission accomplished. Um, need to update this chart because it's getting messier and messier. Um, basically, I will probably stick to the Fibonacci's, uh, Fibonacci levels for now, because if we drop below that 38.2, then my next target will be this 208 EMA, or I mean, in general, this 50% retracement on the Fibonacci, which is roughly around that 4,400 level. Um, and then we'll take it from there, guys. But at the moment, um, looking at the um, in the cash index actually as well. So we can see that yes, we are seeing the index sitting around 4,500 level, uh, basically where it just ended yesterday. So yeah, um, it's it's a no man's game right now, guys. I mean, if you're looking for some upside, um, probably let me just, this is where, I'm, let me just adjust a few levels. This highlighted area needs to go. Uh, this level here, this is the, uh, the highest point of March near the 4,637 zone. Um, so in other words, if you're looking looking for some upside, at least wait for a break of this downside line taken from the high of the 29th of March. And then yes, we could go, uh, we could go for some higher levels. Now, in terms of the, um, in terms of the downside here now, um, like I said, I still need to see a drop somewhere below this 4,455 level just to be a little bit more on the safe side. Um, now then, uh, jump into uh, DXY, the dollar index. So let's have a look what's happening here. Beautiful move, and there we go. We're just coming closer and closer to that uh, 100 level. I talked about it, and I'm still aiming for that. And look at this beautiful reversal. And I said to you yesterday as well that as long as we stay above this hurdle, above this area, I am leaning towards the upside well. Um, again, uh, beautiful, oh, uh, snipping tool jumped in here. A uh, beautiful move here to the upside beautiful first of all beautiful rebound and then beautiful move and uh, now like i said yeah we are aiming for this um for this 100 level and if we uh zoom out here a little bit um yeah we can see that there are some bunch of good levels here we are basically now coming closer to the levels of uh, of may of of april of 2020 um and uh yeah i mean this is when the dollar shot up here uh, 
of course when this, the pandemic started um, this is when yeah the dollar shot up it went above 100 so to be honest I'm expecting this um, to go a little bit further maybe even above the 100 however let's go slowly on this um, because at the moment, yes, like I said, I'm leaning towards the upside. First of all, I'm just leaning, for, I'm aiming for that 100 level. If I get that test, and then I'll take it from there. I want to see um, what's going to happen further. If it's going to go a little bit maybe further north towards that 101 area, which could be which could be possible, and then I'll seek maybe for uh, maybe a bit of a retracement or something like that. But at the moment, yeah, guys, it's just a, a beautiful move to the upside. So let's see how far this will go. Uh, gold. Um, now gold is. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's a bit of a different game here. Now it's it has a bit of a problem with the the fact that yes, it's also a safe haven. However, it's against the U.S. dollar here, and uh, yeah, the U.S. dollar is getting stronger, so gold needs to kind of uh, you know uh, drift a little bit more to the. Um, to the downside so um, however um, however we are not getting that yet because like I said the gold is still also considered a safe haven so and uh, I believe that you know demand for gold could pick up later on however what I would prefer to see here is a, a bit of a decline you know I mean it's my personal preference of course um, because overall yes we're still uh, you know, moving higher, but this little short-term kind of picture here is, is yeah, it's very bearish. I mean, on one hand, you have a descending triangle. Well, you have a potential head and a complex head and shoulder. Well, not a very complex, but a, a head and shoulders pattern. However, mm, the the more it goes to the side here, the more the right shoulder kind of goes to the to the right um, it's really kind of you know moving this idea of a head and shoulders pattern away so that's why it'll be very careful so either way guys I mean I even if it you know don't try to jump in he here yet because um, we do have this hurdle this 1918 area so a nice good drop below it may open the door towards lower levels but here at the moment it still has a chance to break out break out higher and to be honest the more it tests a down let's say a trend line the 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 more chances it then has to break it so uh, yeah be very careful for now it's I do I do understand it's quite attractive right now but yeah, it's uh, uh, it's just flat, and look at the, even the RSI is just 50 around, oscillating around 50, and not doing much. So, although the MACD is a little bit more supportive of the downside, because look, I mean, however, however, how many times we have seen when it comes closer to zero, but then actually, you know, uh, reverses nicely. Uh, like for example, like here in history, there we go. Um, so back here in 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 2020, we also drifted lower. Look how close we came to zero, and, and everybody was probably jumping in here into sell. And there we go, boom! This explosion right here to the upside, guys. So. So yeah, be very, be wary of that um, because, like I said, although it looks very attractive here to the downside, and like some indicators might tell you the same thing, but um, we'll always wait for that confirmation break. Oil uh, drifting to the downside, yeah. So drifting nicely lower here, and I said that if um if we drop below this 98.54 level, my next target is the 93.56, which we almost managed to reach uh, yesterday. Um, but if that gets cleared, then my my next target is the upside line. For now, I'm kind of aiming for that upside line, to be honest. Um, actually, initially, I'm aiming for this 93.56 level. But if, um, yeah, if uh, if this gets cleared, um, my next target is this upside support line taken from the low of the 2nd of December of 2021. This is a very tentative upside line. Nevertheless, I'm still going to keep an eye on it. Uh, Ethereum, guys. Ethereum, um, looking at this here, yes, it's uh, having a nice rebound here from this 208 EMA. And that's just quite interesting, to be honest. Um, we had a good slide. Thing, it, it seems, it looks like that um, this could, could have been an area for you know for those buyers who missed this move to pick up somewhere around here and now you know try to kind of climb higher however 
as I said before, I will keep an eye on this 3,284 level. I would like to see a push above it in order to go for some higher levels. So yeah, for now, I am uh, very careful here and very cautious. And yes, uh, um, I would say I am in order for me to go for some higher levels, I need to see a push above this barrier, this 3,284 zone. Then, of course, we'll, we'll still have some obstacles here on the way higher, but um, at least this could give, you know, that first um, step towards aiming up to the upside again. For the downside, pretty straightforward, guys. I would need to see a drop somewhere below this low, the yesterday's low near the uh, 3,143 area. 80 USD. Um, quick update on this one um, because I talked about it already. And uh, yeah, we're still resting beautifully on that 38.2% retracement on the Fibonacci near that uh, 0.7470 area, I would say. So roughly around here, guys. Um, Okay, um, what I said before and what I said yesterday, actually, I said that be very careful. We might see a nice rebound here um, and um, we could maybe end up seeing somewhat of a head and shoulders pattern or something like that. So, so yeah, um, in, in a way, something like this, basically. Um, like I said, uh, be careful. Um, at the moment, I would, I'm kind of maybe considering this idea. I will, I will adjust accordingly. For example, if it's if it starts dropping below that 38.2% retracement on the Fibonacci, then yeah, I'll go for the 21-day EMA initially because that's going to be quite an interesting area of support or this 50% retracement on the Fibonacci near the 0.7413 level. Um, USD JPY. So uh, this one's quite interesting as well because we're still trading above this upside line. We're slowly grinding higher. Um, but um, this 124 area um, is still providing resistance. Now, in order to go for some higher levels, I would rather wait for a push above this um, this high, the 124.30 area marked by the high of the 29th of March. Uh, yes, we have this 124.05 uh, 20, level as well, but um, like I said, I would prefer to see a clear break above this area first. But if you want, you can always have have a, you know, start looking at this level, but of course, adjust your stop losses accordingly. If this upside line gets broken, that's where it could become a little bit in more interesting for a few more sellers. And if if you remember what I said uh, yesterday as well, that um, keep your eyes on this area, to be honest, because if it holds and then we break this upside line, maybe this is actually going to end up being somewhat of a range here, a short term range. So where we could, you know, see this one moving something like this here. So, yeah. Um, let's uh, examine all the options. Here's the CAD. So uh, my second least favorite pair. Um, okay, so we pushed higher. We it did one thing that I've uh, wanted it to do. So it popped above this 1.2540 area, and I said that if we pop above it, my next target is the 1.2587, which, as you can see, continues to provide a good holdup. Uh, yes, we did get an overshoot here, but it was just a nice false breakout. And uh, yeah, we are now kind of retracing back down. So if we climb above this area once again, then yep, I will I will aim for um, I will aim for that 200 day EMA. Uh, GBP JPY uh, similar trading activity like with USD JPY to be honest. And to be honest, I think I can do uh, the same thing here and. Uh, um, probably I'm going to draw something like this. Um, it's not an ideal one. Don't get me wrong. It's not ideal because it's, uh, yeah, it's just kind of somewhere around here. It's, it's a tentative upside line. So it's not really, um, you know, not something to kind of, you know, stick to or something. Mainly guys stick to some support and resistance levels in such scenarios. And for me, for example, I'll look at the upside if we push above this 162.72 level. And then, yeah, we'll go slowly higher. For the downside, I need to see a drop below this upside line a break below this upside line um, and maybe somewhere a drop below this hurdle this 161.37 uh, just to be a little bit more on the safe side it was a good area of of, of resistance and support so if we clear this one um, then yeah potentially lower levels could be met this is also near yesterday's low Euro JPY. Um, I talked about this one and I said yesterday that keep your eyes on these two lines because at the moment it seems like we could be forming a possible kind of uh, triangle here. So yeah, I mean, if it's, um, it did break below this, ups uh, this upside line, so the lower side of the triangle, 
Mm, but I said before, I need to see a drop somewhere below this 134.44 level. And uh, yeah, we didn't get that. So we didn't get that yet. And uh, we kind of, I wouldn't, I, you know, the, to be honest, this is even like, it's sad to call this even a drop. So it's like, it's just a, some sort of a flirt. So that's why I'm, I'm just neutral for now. I'm just observing the price action. I need to see a stronger move below this, maybe somewhere actually, maybe even below this hurdle, this um, 134.12, just to be a little bit more on the safe side. But hey, um, this area would do as well. But like I said, adjust your stop losses uh, as well accordingly. Um, for the upside, a push above the 135.47 level, probably would be needed here in order to get a little bit more comfortable with the upside scenario. Uh, Euro CAD, guys, very quickly on that one. I know that some of you do trade this one and uh, yeah, um, it's still a mess. Um, it's it, it, it moved lower, it, it dropped below this 1.3673 level. Um, so yeah, it mo made a good move here, but um, you can see that, it, first of all, I was aiming for this level, the 1.3522 zone and uh, and yeah, it's um, it's not really you know working out well here. I would say. I mean, we uh, let me just sh see what the level here. Okay, I think it's up. Nope. 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 There we go. 1.3522, yep, that's the low of the 29th of June of 2015. So initially I was targeting that area, but it was a good area to be honest, but um, yeah, as you can see here, it um, failed to reach that, and now we're back kind of uh, oscillating around this 1.3670. 74 zone, so which I can actually get rid of. Um, this pair actually, if you're, you know, this it's a bit of a tricky one, as, as always, to be honest, a lot of Canadian pairs, uh, or yeah, Canadian dollar pairs are a little bit on the tricky side. So in other words, um, if you're looking for some upside here, at least wait for a push above this 21 day EMA, because that's why I don't have a lot of levels here. And it seems like that it, this pair, for example, doesn't like levels and it just ignores it. And yeah, so it's a, it's a good, you know, rough uh, estimate, like rough indication, but um, it seems to be respecting the EMAs a little bit more here, as you can see here. I mean, uh, it, the, these act as resistance and support. So, so yeah, if we if we get a nice break through this 21-day EMA and stay above it, then yeah, I'll go for higher levels. For now, I'm leaning towards the downside. Uh, Euro USD, finally. Um, okay. Drifting lower. Um, this is what I talked about yesterday, guys. Okay, um, I said to you, we were, we were, we got held up here near this 1.0891. Oh, so it, this is what I said. Um, we got held up here. Okay. We then what I said that if we rebound, be careful with this 1.0945 level, which uh, did uh, you know act as a good area of support. Now it could take the role of resistance, and it did. It did so for the kind of two days in a row, to be honest. Look at this. And yesterday we drifted and stayed below this 1.0. 891 level and now it seems that yes uh, we're drifting lower to be honest this idea is totally working out so quite happy about this and uh, yeah my next target is the lowest point of March near the 1.0806 if we clear that level then uh, this will confirm a forthcoming lower low guys and well uh, you know further declines are possible and to be honest I think I kind of uh, I think that the euro might be will, might remain on the weaker side here uh, because of the whole kind of geopolitical, the old geopolitical tensions in Europe. So uh, yeah, and especially the, the, the fact that the U.S. dollar is, you know, rallying. So in this in this scenario, euro USD could remain under selling pressure. However, however, we take everything with a pinch of salt, and uh, we do you know understand that strong reversals might happen. So that's why we go slowly on this. That's why I don't like to maybe, let's say, you know, analyze this in a very long term. So uh, yeah, uh, for now, I'm just aiming for this lowest point of March. And then we'll see. Because if it breaks this, uh, this will confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, uh, further declines could be possible. Okay, guys, uh, that's it for this session. I really hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I really appreciate your time, guys, your views, your likes, your comments. Really appreciate that. So if you want to catch me uh, tomorrow, uh, sorry, tomorrow, uh, Monday morning, as always, uh, my Trader's Espresso is going to be re recorded session um, again. Um, but yeah, if you, like I said, if you still 
um, find my videos useful. So please, yeah, check it, check it out. Uh, somewhere around nine o'clock. Uh, Nine, no, sorry, nine o'clock, uh, six o'clock GMT time, um, and uh, maybe a little bit after. So yeah, it will be uploaded. So thank you very much, guys. Have a wonderful trading day today. Don't overtrade. It's Friday. That's a rule. Uh, don't overtrade because it's again, it's Friday. You need to go, you know, relaxed and you with with a smile into the weekend. So, but anyway, thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you on Monday.